Now everyone, I have some exciting news to tell all of you. I had a chance to look at the exterior and the interior of this MG ZS and I can already tell you it's probably one of the best electric crossover SUVs currently available. And I say probably everyone. Yes, yes, yes everyone. Over here is the MG ZS. Now, MG it has a really conflicting identity at the moment. Historically, they were known to build beautiful British coupes. Ever since the 2000s, they're owned by a Chinese car manufacturer called Saic Motors. S-A-I-C. I'm not sure how it's supposed to be pronounced. Lately, MG has gone down the route of electric crossover SUVs and so far they've seen success in this regard. This MG ZS costs 43,000 euros. Is it good value for money or not? We are going to find out in a moment, but what I can already tell is that this is far cheaper than what I saw of the Volvo EX30, which costed 55,000 euros, and the Volkswagen ID3 facelift, which was around the same price as the Volvo EX30. Both of these European competitors were great, but at the same time, they were quite alarming in terms of equipment list and what they had going on inside. This MG, on the other hand, already the first thing that comes to my mind is the fact that this is a crossover SUV and it looks bigger than the two European competitors and it's not even competing against these two models I just mentioned. Now standing next to the MG ZS, I'm not entirely sure who exactly does it compete against, but the, the dimension is very similar to what I've seen of the Nissan Qashqai. You get a 360 degree parking camera, you get parking sensors at the rear but not at the front guys. Now whether this is something to question or not, I, this is for an SUV of this size and segment I would expect maybe a parking sensor at the front but it's not a really big deal when you have the camera at the front. And when it comes to air vents, you get a real side air vent right there and a real air vent right here and a nice MG badge with this nice detailing right here. And your recharge cap is right at the front, everybody. Front doors get keyless entry, everyone. Now just listen to the quality of the door. The whole door vibrates and also it's super light, which is pleasant, but at the same time, the quality. Now the interior of the MG ZS. Alrighty, so interior is very interesting. First impression, presentation. It seems like MG has gone for a sporty theme in this interior and they've been doing this thing lately and I've noticed this with other MG models. There's always a conflicting theme. Exterior looks humble or it looks cross country with this hard plastic surrounding the wheel. But then as you go in the interior, there's a sporty theme, especially with this carbon fiber effect. Now it is not carbon fiber, but it's plastic with carbon fiber effect on top. So um, it, it's quite interesting. Oh, but it's squidgy, whatever it is. Oh, sorry, my apologies. It's not plastic. It's actually squidgy material with red stitching over there. I like it. And then the seats as well. Now the seats, to be fair, are not sporty, but they do have this sport looking effect to them. Rest of the interior is quite nice. You get this beautiful piano black uh, around the transmission, which is a swivel wheel. Very good concept. And uh, over here, parking brake with uh, the uh, auto hold, which is quite good. Now, when it comes to the overall, uh, the steering wheel, the steering wheel is very firm. It's, there's no squidgy plastic or, or squidgy material to it. Uh, it's, it's, it's got leather wrapping to it, but it just doesn't feel any different to plastic, guys. It's very firm to hold on to, and it's quite sporty, which again brings me down to the conflicting theme, everybody. Uh, digital instrument cluster, infotainment system right here. Now, there's something very remarkable about the interior of this uh, MG ZS. They've gone down a different route. It looks like a conventional combustion engine car, and I say this because of the presence of physical buttons. Most car manufacturers like BYD, Tesla, uh, even Volvo and then also Mercedes and uh, most car manufacturers, they've gone down the route of simplicity. So this equally means massive tablet or a solution that involves less physical buttons possible, including the Volkswagen Group. They, they've gone down that route. But NG has stuck to physical buttons and this is great. Just like BMW, they both have stuck to physical buttons for the necessary functions or shortcut buttons to reach the certain areas of the infotainment system quickly. But then there's also something else. Uh, I've just noticed that compared to other competitors, the 
tablet, the infotainment system, the, the screen itself, it's a bit smaller than what competitors offer. Now, whether this is really something to debate on, you all be the judge because it is 43,000 euros. So to be fair, hmm, nothing much to complain about. Otherwise, over here, you get a 12 volt socket, quite nice, but different concept. It's like, a, hmm, you have to pull it out. There's no clip. You get a USB point and a charging port. Hmm, good. And uh, I like the uh, the presentation of this area. It's, it's interesting. And then, ironically, you get three stokes, guys. One for your wipers, one for your lighting, and a third one for your cruise control. MG, did you get inspired by the Volkswagen Group by any chance? Because the Volkswagen Group, they love having their third stoke right there. For I know Skoda in particular is obsessed with it for their cruise control. Now, when it comes to the window buttons, guys, it's all hard plastic in this area. Like, the door... That's where you get more hard plastic than anywhere else. Uh, but you get, you do get some squidgy leather, which is a very stark contrast. I mean, first you get the squidgy leather, which is pleasant, and then hard plastic. Oh, it's okay. Fine. Now we do have to cover practicality solutions, everybody. Okay, so little pad over here. This is, I think, your wireless telephone recharge, if I'm correct. Then over here, two cup holders of fixed sizes. And I like the, the cover you get on top. It's cute. Wow, okay. That's a loose uh, central console. Okay. The central console storage is pretty small. It's it's a bit deep, but it's quite narrow. Very narrow. Now, glove box, everybody. The glove box is... It's good I can reach it from the driver's seat, but it's, uh, it's average for its price and segment. Interesting. And you get this nice handle over here. I guess that's for the passenger to hold on to if they are freaked out by your driving skills. <laughs> uh, oh! Air vents. Nice air vents. Oh, yes, we do have to cover this area. Good news and bad news already. Good news is panoramic roof. I'm not sure if it's a sunroof, is it? It's a sunroof. Oh, that's good news. But the bad news is there's no glasses holder because apparently everybody hates glasses holders these days. Literally everybody, except me. I need my glasses holder. So where do I put my sunglasses on a hot day? Probably the door bin. And the door bin... I wouldn't be surprised if we can actually fit a big water bottle. Electric seating adjustment for the driver. Now the back seat of the MG ZS. Wow. Ease of entrance, everybody. This is... Oh, wow. I have so much leg room. The leg room, I get acres of space. I can almost stretch my legs, literally. And that's also because the driver's seat and the front passenger seat, the railings for their seats are elevated. So that equally means more leg space, more feet room. My knee room is, is great. And even if ever your knee makes contact with the driver's seat or front passenger seat, the back seats are rather, uh, the back of the seats are rather squidgy. So that's good. Headroom. Headroom is good. It, it's decent, everybody. And, and the ceiling is quite squidgy. I like the material of it. The headrest is a bit on the firm side, but it is fine, everyone. Now, just one thing I'd like to remark is that this, for a price of 43,000 euros, is far better than my experience in certain competitors because I had a chance to check out the Volvo EX30 and also the Volkswagen ID3. Both of these competitors had cramped rear seats, especially the Volvo. And one of them, one of them didn't even offer a back seat armrest, whereas MG had the decency to offer you that. This is great, and you even get a beautifully uh, presented cup holder. Feels like an expensive car, except a budget version of it. Great. No climate control, but you do get air vents down there, and uh, two char well, a charging port and a USB point. Decent, I like it. And you even get handles to help yourself climb inside. This is very important. And backseat pockets, everyone. Wow. This is great. So here's my conclusion of the MG ZS. For a price of 43,000 euros in the context of equipment, I have to say that this MG ZS is great value for money. It's one of the best electric crossover SUVs I've ever seen. And the practicality solutions were hit or miss. But I have to say for the back seat, it was one of the best I've ever seen, especially for what its price indicates compared to what I've seen of competitors. But in the context of identity and history, 
the MG ZS suffers the same problem as other Chinese car manufacturers. Wait, 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 I still have my opinion to express. This MG ZS is one of the best electric crossover SUV I've ever seen for what its price indicates. The equipment list, the spacious rear seats, it can be very family friendly and it is full of potentials. Now, it is of selective taste in the topic of design and identity and desirability. So don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and stay tuned for more videos that are on the run. I will see you all next time.